For at TV, the world is thinking. Okay, well, yeah, this is a good example of where, very nice, where, where um, um, parasitic infections, particularly worm infections, may be advantageous. So, um, if, you know, a lot of people in this country, and particularly in the last few years, it's, it almost seems like the incidence of asthma is going up, right? I mean, just a lot of kids with asthma, right? If you go to rural Brazil, if you go to rural Vietnam, if you go to any parts of Africa, you do not see asthma. You do not see asthma, right? And so a while ago, people began to look at this, and they found that if kids, this was a big study that was first done in Brazil, so they took a whole bunch of kids who had documented parasitic infections, worm infections, like these schistosome parasites, as uh, uh, you know, five to seven years old. And then they took a, another bunch of kids who primarily grew up in Rio and they didn't get these types of infections. And the incidence of asthma was, was the, as high as it was in, in Europe or in, in America amongst the kids who did not have parasitic infections. It was virtually unknown in the kids with parasitic infections. So this began to, to um, focus people's attention on, huh, what is it about these infections and asthma? And at the same time, immunologists, the people who study our immune response, were focusing in on the parts of our immune response that specifically target parasites. And it turns out that the part of your immune response which has evolved to kill parasites, to, to rid your, your intestine of these parasitic worms, for example, is the same part of your immune response that causes asthma, uh, seasonal allergy, Crohn's disease, uh, any of these so-called autoimmune type, type diseases, right? And this has gotten to the point now where people are going, huh, all right, if someone really has bad Crohn's disease, what if I gave them a parasitic infection? Would it get better, okay? And there's, there's a big study going on at the National Institutes of Health right now to address that question, but I'll just tell you an anecdotal story. There is a, uh, a dot-com entrepreneur in the Bay Area, whose name I will not give you, who um, had terrible ulcerative colitis. Okay? Some of you may know ulcerative colitis is one of these erosive diseases of the intestine. They're flare-ups. Some of you may know someone with ulcerative, someone here may have ulcerative colitis. Um, really horrible disease. No one knows the etiology. It seems to be some type of inflammatory disease. And it can lead to cancer because of chronic inflammation. So he, this young man got to the point where a surgeon told him, look, you have, your ulcerative colitis is so bad that if I don't take out two-thirds of your intestine, you're certainly going to get colon cancer. So he had been reading about this hygiene hypothesis, and he said, you know, <laughs> What have I got to lose here? I'm going to lose either two-thirds of my intestine, or why don't I try infecting myself with one of these worms and see what happens, right? So he went out, and he got eggs, um, and he infected himself. I won't tell you where or who helped him. And um, <laughs> he used whipworm, okay? Because whipworm is not like Ascaris. It doesn't cause um, intestinal obstruction. And you can easily get rid of it with albendazole. So if you don't like what it's doing for you, boom, you get rid of it, right? So it's, it's like an on-off switch that way. So he took this, and for three years, he was symptom-free and didn't have his, his colon taken out. Now, that's an anecdote. So you can say, oh, well, he would have been symptom-free anyway. But there's a big study going on at the NIH. So look in the newspaper, because you'll see the results of this. Very interesting to see whether there's some way in which you can... Um, you know, alter people's immune response to make it seem like they had these types of worm infections, and then that alters the way in which they produce these strange diseases and maybe makes them better. And that's what the hygiene hypothesis is about. So it's a very good example of where parasitic infections may help you.